runoff elections are today in Arkansas. We'll tell you how you can impact the outcome. Also, farmers face billions in losses as Governor Sarah Sanders and 16 others urge Congress to act on the farm bill. Here what's at stake for you. And an Arkansan billionaire who once opposed Donald Trump is now tapped as ambassador to the UK. Find out what Warren Stevens says about the role. Those headlines and more are coming up on KASU News for Tuesday, December 3rd, 2024. I'm Brandon Tabor. Arkansans across 17 counties will vote in runoff elections today. Polls are open from 7.30 in the morning until 7.30 tonight. To find out if there's a runoff election near you, as well as polling locations, you can go to the Voter View link on our website, kasu.org. In Northeast Arkansas, there are three runoff elections happening. In Jonesboro, incumbent Harold Copenhaver faces L.J. Bryant for the mayoral position. Incumbent Kelsey Hensley and Jean Hardin are running for a seat on the Marion City Council. And in Parkin, Sherry Gillen hopes to defend her position on the Parkin City Council against Justin Hopkins. Jonesboro City Council members have postponed tonight's meetings because of the mayoral runoff elections. The Public Works Committee and the full City Council will now meet on Thursday this week in the Municipal Building Council Chambers. The Public Works Committee at 5 will discuss an ordinance to amend sections of the Stormwater Drainage Design Manual. The City Council at 5.30 will discuss various municipal lien resolutions, zoning ordinances, requests for traffic signs, and review the most recent financial statements. A hearing was held yesterday in a case over Arkansas's redrawing of congressional districts. Member station Little Rock Public Radio's Josie Lenora was in the courtroom and has more. The case is over a redistricting decision made by legislators in 2021. Litigants argue lawmakers made a racist call to split up black voters in Pulaski County. The plan moved over 41,000 people in predominantly black central Arkansas voting precincts out of a U.S. congressional district expanding the district into wider areas of Cleburne County. This is the second congressional district which voted this year to re-elect U.S. Representative French Hill. Lawyers representing the Christian Ministerial Alliance made arguments before a three-judge panel Monday morning. They said lawmakers were consciously making a racist decision because they had access to demographic data and made vague comments to that effect. Lawyers for the state said there was not enough evidence to support the allegations of racism. Judges' questions hinged on trying to discern the motives for the redistricting plan, since legislators can make redistricting decisions that are not racially based. Three other cases over redistricting have been dismissed. In Little Rock, I'm Josie Lenora. Arkansas Governor Sarah Sanders has joined 16 other Republican governors urging Congress to pass the Farm Bill. In yesterday's letter to House and Senate leadership, the Republican Governors Association called on Congress to, quote, protect and revitalize the agriculture industry before it's too late. The letter cites projections that farmers will lose up to $35 billion in profits this year alone due to high inflation, input costs, and interest rates, coupled with catastrophic weather events. The current bill was reauthorized in 2018 and extended last year. Congress has until the end of December to authorize the Farm Bill and has considered issuing another one-year extension. The letter calls the current bill outdated and says it will not meet the needs of the agricultural sector through 2025. Next, the debate over President-elect Trump's plan to eliminate the Department of Education and its potential impact on Arkansas schools. We'll have more after the break. Hi, I'm Brandon Haber. I'm Matthew Moore. And I'm Daniel Brain. And this is the News Wrap from the Arkansas Newsroom. Each week, you'll hear stories from Central Arkansas with KUAR, Northeast Arkansas with KASU, and Northwest Arkansas and the River Valley with KUAF. Stories that impact the entire natural state. Listen to the News Wrap at KASU.org. President-elect Donald Trump has proposed a plan to eliminate the Federal Department of Education. Arkansas Education Secretary Jacob Oliva has shared his hopes that this means Arkansas will continue to receive its federal funding without federal oversight of how it's utilized. Kisa Smith-Brantley is the Executive Director of Arkansas Advocates for Children and Families. Smith-Brantley says the argument to abolish the Department of Education has been around since its inception. But, she says, she has questions about Oliva's standpoint. The biggest question in that is, number one, 
will the federal government choose to give us the amount of money that we need um, to fund public education in Arkansas? How is the determination going to be made on how the states are funded? Not to mention that those dollars will likely still come with red tape. So it won't be just as simple as the state of Arkansas getting this big pot of money for education that we use to distribute however we feel best. She says Arkansas also receives federal funding because nearly one third of the state's population meets the federal definition of poverty. And so that really does correlate to the amount of federal funding we get for um, for education because many of our rural school districts meet the definition that would lead to increased Title I funding. Smith Brantley added that Department of Education funding is critical during times of recession. She made the comments while speaking with member station KUAF in Fayetteville. In 2008, the Department of Education gave states nearly $14 billion in additional federal funding to bolster education efforts. President-elect Donald Trump has named an Arkansan to serve as ambassador to the United Kingdom. Trump yesterday tapped Warren Stevens to serve in the post. Stevens is a billionaire investment banker and has regularly donated to conservative causes. He currently serves as chair, president, and CEO of Stevens Incorporated, based in Little Rock, one of the largest privately owned investment banks in the world. He initially opposed Trump's 2016 run for president, but later supported his unsuccessful 2020 campaign. Stevens said in a statement he's honored to serve in the role. In southeast Missouri, the city of Cartwell's water department has issued a precautionary boil order that's in effect until further notice. In a letter posted on the Cartwell, Missouri Information Facebook page, Mayor Lonnie Ward said the order was issued because of a malfunction within the water treatment plant. The Southland C9 school district said students are encouraged to bring bottled water to class. CDC advises those under a boil order to use either bottled water or water boiled for at least a minute for drinking, cooking, and brushing their teeth. A Missouri man is facing scheduled execution this evening for the sexual assault and killing of a nine-year-old girl whose body was dumped in a sinkhole. Barring an unexpected development, inmate Christopher Collings is scheduled to receive a lethal injection of pentoprobidol for his conviction in the 2007 death of Rowan Ford. The fourth grader was strangled in the southwestern Missouri town of Stella on November 3, 2007, and her body was found days later in a sinkhole outside of town. Yesterday, Republican Governor Mike Parson denied a clemency petition and the U.S. Supreme Court denied a request to intervene. No further appeals are planned. Local singer-songwriter Corey Jackson will be among this year's performers during the annual Downtown Jonesboro Joy Fest happening this weekend. Sarah Doss with the Downtown Jonesboro Alliance told Jonesboro Right Now that over 50 vendors have signed up this year. Doss said a new attraction this year will be a carousel ride. There will also be a Ferris wheel, teacups, and an ice skating rink. Additional live performances include the Foundation of Arts, the Link Theater, Chieftain Lane Revival, and Turnip Greens. Doss said rides will be open on Friday for a preview in anticipation of the Christmas Parade. The full event will start at 3 Saturday afternoon. More details are on the Downtown Jonesboro Alliance's Facebook page. That's all for KASU News. Music provided by 2B Studio. You can find more stories online at KASU.org. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for KASU News on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. In Jonesboro, I'm Brandon Tabor, KASU News.